Small drones carrying mortar shells are already scary enough. They can damage or sometimes even destroy military systems that cost millions to build. That's why countries are trying to arm these small and micro drones with weapons that are effective both on the battlefield and on their budgets. Some drones like Turkey's Asisgard Solnar can carry grenade launchers and machine guns. Others, like self-delete drones, serve similar missions, but they're one-time use. Once deployed, that's it. Now, arming a multi-copter drone is economical. But adding real firepower is a much bigger challenge. That's because weapons are heavy. Mounting a firearm or launcher significantly increases a drone's weight, which affects lift, stability, and flight time. Improvised micro-drones in the Ukraine conflict have limitations, especially in range and payload capacity. To overcome these, drones like the Sungar use advanced composite materials to keep the airframe light yet strong. They also employ more powerful propulsion systems to carry extra weight. Enhancements like gyroscopes, inertial measurement units, and AI-based flight control help maintain stability, even while firing. Now here's the tricky part. Heavier weapons generate recoil, which can destabilize or even crash a drone mid-flight. To handle this, engineers modify the weapon system itself, adding special recoil-absorbing mounts. The drone must also be able to send fire commands and receive real-time status data. A dedicated fire control system is needed between the drone's flight controller and the weapon. And of course, military-grade encrypted communication ensures the commands are secure and reliable. All of this complexity is required to make a truly functional killer drone. And it seems India has just done exactly that, by integrating something far more advanced than a mortar shell, grenade launcher, or machine gun. India recently released a test video of a new drone that can carry and fire an anti-tank guided missile. Now, adding an ADGM to a drone is a whole different level of complexity. These missiles are much heavier than machine guns or grenades. So, India had to ensure that the drone was powerful enough to carry the missile and stable enough to launch it effectively. Take a close look at the launch mechanism in the video. The missile wasn't fired from a tube or rail, like a rocket. Instead, it was launched using a carriage and release soft launch mechanism, similar to how fighter jets drop missiles or glide bombs. The drone simply released the missile, and after dropping about one meter, the missile's rocket motor ignited mid-air. This technique does several things like it eliminates recoil, protecting the drone, avoids backblast which can damage or destabilize the UAV, and ensures the missile seeker locks on cleanly from the moment of launch. There are three key technical achievements here, safe missile integration, clean mid-air separation mechanics, and controlled ignition sequencing. New Space Research Technologies, a Bengaluru-based startup, developed the drone to integrate the ULPGM V3, DRDO's next-generation extended-range air-to-service missile. The missile weighs around 12.5 kilograms and uses a dual-thrust solid rocket motor with thrust vectoring for enhanced control. It has a maximum range of approximately 4 kilometers in daylight and 2.5 kilometers at night, with an extended reach of up to 10 kilometers under ideal conditions. The ULPGM, V3 is equipped with a high-definition dual-channel seeker, combining passive infrared imaging and laser guidance for high-precision targeting. It operates in fire-and-forget mode, with a two-way data link that allows for post-launch aim point updates or mid-course retargeting. Its accuracy is exceptional, with a circular error probable of just around 10 centimeters. The missile is also modular, supporting three distinct warhead types. An anti-armor warhead with a tandem charge to defeat tanks with rolled homogeneous armor and explosive reactive armor. A penetration warhead designed for destroying bunkers and hardened targets, and a pre-fragmentation warhead for delivering high lethality against soft targets over a wider area. So why did India equip a drone with an anti-tank guided missile? 
tanks, especially modern ones with explosive reactive armor and composite protection layers, are seriously hard to kill. But the ULPGM is built exactly for that. It uses a tandem charge warhead, which is designed to beat these kinds of defenses. The first charge activates and neutralizes the ERA, and then the second, more powerful charge goes straight through the main armor, which is usually made of rolled homogeneous armor. What makes this even more deadly is the launch angle and mobility of the drone itself. A soldier with a shoulder-fired launcher is often limited to shooting from the front or side. But a drone it can strike from above, and the top of a tank is where the armor is weakest. That's a massive tactical advantage. Even heavily protected tanks like the T-90, Abrams, or a Leopard 2 are vulnerable from the top. The drone is also quiet, fast and remote controlled. It can hover, fire and vanish, all without exposing the operator or risking any soldiers. Plus, the ULPGM works in fire infrared mode, and with a circular error probable of just 10 centimeters, it's insanely accurate. We're talking about hitting engine decks, hatches, or even precise weak points in turret armor. So, the bottom line? India just built a flying, precision tank killer. And it gives Indian forces the ability to eliminate high-value armored targets without needing manned aircraft or risking anti-tank teams on the front lines.